thank you guys for venturing out. I know we've been inside of this for two years now. I know that waiting patiently, impatiently, anxiously for the ability to see my words performed again has uh, been uh, deeply frustrating to me. Um, but it's wildly affirming that you guys have all come out in the midst and the rick and the, the, the rick and roll of whatever we're in right now um, to see this play. Um, I, I I usually am much more verbose in moments like this, and I'm really like, bah, da, 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 da. Um, but um, I, I I don't know. I'm in a moment of thinking a lot about um, my life and the life that led me here and led me to this play today. And um, I'm just um, so grateful that uh, this play that I wrote five years ago in a basement, in a, in a, in a uh, sort of a format much like this, it was a three-quarter thrust um, at Yale School of Drama for 76 people, um, is now being seen every night in a 750-seat theater in... <laughs> I spent six years um, figuring out what I wanted to do with my life or how I was going to make um, make good on the promises I, I had made to my mother and my family about um, what type of person I was going to be after they spent their entire life breaking their backs in factories and um, in different iterations of um, working poor in the South um, so that their, their grandson and son that they thought was really smart could like have opportunities. Um, I, instead of going to Brown or UVA or any of the smart schools I could have gone to, I decided to be an actor um, and went to a conservatory um, where I had to think with my body. And um, uh, after getting cut there, I, uh, <laughs> I decided to move to LA. not getting very much work as an actor, um, because who wants this body, right? Um, uh, I, I decided to start thinking with that brain again, and um, for six years I wrote in secret here. Um, in my journal, um, I read every play I could get my hands on. Um, shout out to the, the Los Angeles library system, I think it's amazing. <laughs> After reading all the plays I could and imagining a future for myself that was different than the one my family had imagined for me, um, I, uh, I, I decided to take my playwriting seriously and got into Yale, and um, this is the first play I wrote there. Um, so it's really, really, really affirming that I get to no longer be a writer in secret in LA, but a writer in public, and I thank you guys for being a part of that public. are not my strong suit tonight. Um, I decided to uh, invite up my friend Morgan Parker, who is a genius of words. She's an amazing Los Angeles-based poet, and she wrote a piece that is in everyone's program, that has been in everyone's program since the first Broadway run, called A Note on Your Discomfort, and I have invited her up here to read this. It is a way to blessing the space tonight, so... Tried to post, post coitally tell a white lover that when we have sex, 
there's a blip wherein I suddenly inhabit an ancestor's body. And he the pale of a white pilfering master. Whiteness was difficult for my lover to hear about. And mid-thrust ancestral abduction, perhaps incomprehensible, <laughs> but it got said. Pain can be useful once it's off our chests, even funny. This aching humor is a black necessity and art form slave play deftly exercises and exploits. There's a gun in the first act. It's a big black dildo. The cock of the gun is a long, black memory, illuminating, uncomfortable, but plain as less. Totally varied in our levels of comprehending the general materiality of black America, my audience laughed, gasped, sucked our teeth unsynchronized. We're saying language, but really dealing with power, the poet June Jordan said. We're saying aggression, but dealing with desire, shame, but really ancestral memory. We're saying sex, but meaning ownership. The astoundingly sharp Jeremy O'Harris, through scrupulously observed and sardonically genuine characters, has created a work purely innovative, queering and blue-blackening conflict, plot, even its title. Slave play is a radical study in American memory. The psychologies of the prized and the oppressed, the grateful and the entitled, who's top, who's bottom, who speaks, who can't, and who better listen. Thank y'all. Thank you.